Hello Scorpio and welcome to your in-depth monthly horoscope for February 2023 for the Sun or the Ascendant. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to give you some key details to look out for to begin with, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail all the key influences particularly relevant to your sign. Now this month begins with the sun in the fourth house, very much to do with your inner world and also to do with where you live, your physical environment and a need for a little bit of peace and tranquility. But of course you've had strict Saturn in this area for the last two, near to two and a half years and they are going to be meeting in week three of this month. So if you've been making some changes around where you reside, or some family additions have come along, or it hasn't always been easy around the immediate inner world of your situation in the last few years, it wouldn't be a surprise because Saturn, of course, can be quite cold and restrictive. But the sun this month is going to help you to celebrate just what you've achieved and what you've learned. But excitingly, there is some conjunctions with your uh, modern ruler of Pluto, not least Mercury, but also there is a conjunction between the moon and Pluto, which occurs on the 18th when the sun makes its way into the glorious fifth house, which is much more outgoing, playful and affectionate. So I can't wait to tell you about that. You also have Venus for the first three weeks of this month in a delightful location too. Great for your love life. And as the month comes to a close, although Venus moves into a new sign, it could be uh, very positive for you in terms of a job application. A little bit of luck can come your way as the curtain comes down on February Scorpio. So please stay with me for all of that. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me. If you would care to subscribe, if you click or tap the bell notification symbol, it just means every time I share a video, as you know, you will get that alert, keeps you abreast. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me once more. I've now had 29 million views on YouTube and I appreciate every single one. However, if you've yet to order your year 2023 personal forecast, so you can uh, rise above this Zodiac broadcast, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date, and place of birth, I can give you your forecast for the next year, and also your life roadmap in my special package of 30% off, which helps you to understand some of the deeper patterns that have come up for you, good and bad, and help you to become more intimate with how to deal with these and how to gain uh, traction from working with your strengths more closely. Also, in my special package, you can get your Zodiac forecast for the year, your Chinese and Indian forecast too. Please see the link beneath this video. So Scorpio, as you make your way into February 2023, your ruling, your traditional ruling planet of Mars is forging a really positive alliance with the Sun. If you're someone who's a natural do-it-yourselfer, you could feel really motivated as the month begins. Uh, maybe you are uh, building something or improving something, but the desire to get it done and get it done efficiently will be really very powerful. But on the 5th, there is a full moon in the sign of Leo, which of course is very grand and regal, but for you, this is house 10. Very difficult to disguise how you feel when the moon is in house 10. And so an issue which you may prefer to keep uh, somewhat more confidential could come into the open and the reason for that Scorpio is that Uranus is in the mix in your seventh house of relating and therefore whether it is to do with home emotion family matter or a professional or worldly interaction somehow or another the truth planet Uranus seems to come in and could drop some kind of truth bomb but if that happens, it's just really asking you to make sure that the balance between making sure that your security and your need for privacy is, is well aligned 
with the energy and availability you've got for those more professional hopes, aspirations and goals. So for example, if you're in a job that you're just not enjoying, I think a frank discussion can happen in the two weeks from the fifth, but it may actually help to clear the air and help you to understand what you really need to do. Then again, if your work's fine, but you're not quite as connected to how uh, you feel or maybe members of your family feel that you're too tied up professionally then a, a, a moment to become more conscious of their needs but in uh, week three Saturn is going to be joined by the Sun and this is really important because of course this has happened every year that um, Saturn has been in the sign of Aquarius but because it's just about to move into your fifth house on the 7th of March, this is the last time this is going to happen for around about 27 years. So a very important juncture in terms of that core of your life, what it represents. But because Mercury is combining with your modern ruler Pluto from the 8th to the 12th, you could have a conversation, it may be with a neighbour, a sibling, Maybe you'll read something, learn something, or even tell someone something that's very important to you. And also on the 11th, Mercury joins up with the Sun and Saturn in Aquarius. And if there is something that needs to be rethought or spoken through, Mercury can help you because it actually enjoys being in the sign of Aquarius because it's exalted here, particularly in the second decan of the sign. It could be, and this can happen, when Mercury is in the fourth house, um, concerns and thoughts can circulate around our mind, but we find it more difficult to express them. And because on Valentine's Day, the Sun is side by side with Saturn, maybe what, what you're really wanting more than anything else is for other people to almost instinctively understand how you're feeling. Because you could feel a little bit tongue-tied, but equally, you're so much more aware of what's really important in terms of the foundations of your emotional existence after all the practice that Saturn has given you over the last few years. So when the sun moves on the 18th into the lovely fifth house, initially joining with glorious Venus and Neptune, at that point the moon combines with your modern ruler in the part of your scope to do with everyday expression. So I think there can be some delightful exchanges around the 18th and ones that are heartfelt too. But on the 20th, Venus moves into the sign of Aries, technically detrimented here. And for you, this is the sixth, that's more practical. So Venus here is asking you, what can I do for others? Can I be a bit more attentive? Is there someone who's a bit awkward at work that I could perhaps be a bit more diplomatic with? But there's also a new moon on the same day, which ordinarily would be a wonderful platform to showcase your talents in the following month or to be more outgoing around your social or romantic uh, worlds. But because Saturn is so late in Aquarius, it's combining with the new moon in uh, Pisces. So... If you do decide to make any moves forwards around your romantic situation, I think it needs to really feel solid. But the sun then goes on to forge a really positive semi-sextile to Venus in the last week of this month, which can be really good for you because that gives you a nice balance of wanting to be open, warm, uh, interact with people, but also being very grounded about the realities of of whatever it, uh, prospect you have in terms of that relationship. But on the 27th and 28th, there could be a job opportunity that comes up for you, or maybe someone you work with can be in a generous mood. We're living in a world where costs are going up faster than wages. If you're lucky enough to get some kind of bonus or recognition or gift, that would be absolutely delightful. But I feel that 
You could, if you're someone who really enjoys animals, there could be a new addition to your family right at the end of this month. Then again, if you're very fond of an aunt or uncle, that, that's also very influenced by the sixth house. And their generosity may be something that uh, comes to you in an upbeat way as well. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Scorpio. Thank you so much for joining me. Wishing you all the best and goodbye for now.